All right, well, this is not the video I expected to be making. I was hoping to be making a video of uh, tandeming and competing and battling, going super fast in the vet, doing our first comp of the year. Uh, but instead, here we are, back home. And there's a, there's a not so fun reason for that. So basically, this all started with us heading to LS Fest, Texas. It's about a 16 and a half hour drive on maps. So realistically with a trailer and stops, you're looking 18, 19 hours or so. It's, it's a hike. So we decided to leave a day early. We left after a day of work. We left at around six o'clock. We drove for, you know, seven, eight hours, stopped at a hotel, slept for a little bit, got up at eight in the morning and headed out to finish our drive. So we'd get there Thursday evening, have time to unload, go to the hotel, have a relaxing start to our weekend because this is gonna be our first comp of the year. Our third comp in the vet, we're gonna be doing two competitions back to back. We're two, doing two days at LS Fest in Dallas and then driving down to Houston on the way home for a Lone Star comp. We had our Nitto 315s for LS Fest. We had our Nitto 285s for Lone Star. I mean, we were prepped. We had gone through the entire car front to back. We had merch, we made a merch sign. I mean, we put in the works to be as prepared as possible for this event. And the one thing that we had really no control over is what ended up letting us down. So we got on the road again at around eight in the morning headed out from our hotel, everything was going swimmingly. We were cruising, we were laughing, we were listening to Sweet Home Alabama's, we came through Alabama, we were having a great time. And then out of nowhere, we get a warning light saying reduced engine power. Now I've had this happen in my old truck and normally it's just reduced engine power. So I thought, okay, maybe this isn't the end of the world. Maybe we'll be all right. Uh, and we had a rest area coming up about a mile ahead. So I'm like, all right, we'll pull into the rest area. But then the truck started slowing down. Uh, we were cruising at 70, 75, and it just started slowly losing speed on flat ground. And we had a pretty steep, short bridge to cross <laughs> to get into this rest area. So I had to make it downshift, got us over the hill, pulled into the rest area. And I mean, as we were pulling into the spot, the truck just died just died completely, no power steering, no power brakes. We coasted to a stop. And uh, yeah, that's really where our problems began. You know, we were hopeful that it was gonna be something simple. You know, maybe we could change the fuel filter. You know, we're used to working on stuff ourselves, but in this scenario, the truck is and should be covered under warranty. So we can't really touch it too much because then obviously we don't wanna give them any reason to avoid the warranty, but we also would be rather just fix it ourselves and get back on the road if it's a simple issue. So that's kind of the pickle we were in and um, it doesn't really get a whole lot better from there. So let's get into it. All right, well, irony is here. I bought a used but almost new 2020 Ford Super Duty about a year ago now. I put about 15,000 miles on it. And the reason I bought that truck was to tow long trips like this and not have to worry about breaking down. And obviously I know that that's always a possibility, but that was the idea. And not that my Fummins ever let me down, but you know, it's just, it was always a fear of mine. This was a fear of mine. And now we are broken down half, literally halfway between home and our destination. Literally my worst case scenario, because now we've got the trailer with my race car in it, with all my stuff, tools, tires, camera equipment, literally everything. My whole entire livelihood is in that trailer and we are stuck uh, at a rest stop in Louisiana. And it sounds like the truck's injection, the CP4 is bad, which it's under warranty, but we'll see if they'll uh, warranty it. I've tried to do everything right. I just got the oil changed when it was due. You know, I don't know how it could ever be my fault. I haven't had the truck but for 10, 15,000 miles. So, you know, it's definitely a bummer. Definitely a bummer. Built the phones, put a lot of time into it for this reason. So that if we did break down, we could easily fix it ourselves. You know, if we had an injector go bad or something, we could change it in a rest area. We could get a ride to the store, get an injector, put it in right here, right now. Um, but here we are. So we checked the fuel filter. We pulled the fuel filter. It looked reasonably clean it didn't look dirty at all it looked clean luckily a uh, collision shop nearby uh one of the workers there was a viewer which is awesome i put out a stress call he came with a code reader the oem code reader read the codes and we've got low fuel pressure on bank one low rail pressure which probably means our cp4 our injection pump is donezo's which means we need a whole new fuel system but we're kind of we're stranded and this has always been my biggest fear of towing so yeah anyway we're waiting for a tow done everything we can do it is what it is.
the truck is way out back of their lot. They're not gonna diagnose it for two to three days before they'll even consider whether it's warrantyable or not. The trailer we were told could not be dropped off out, could not be brought inside. They would not take the trailer, store the trailer, do anything with the trailer. So we put the trailer out here, which isn't generally the reason you buy a truck to tow a trailer with a warranty. So then on top of that, I just went in to grab my keys to go get my last bit of stuff out of the trailer because we may have a truck on the way that's gonna help us get this thing home. And uh, because they won't offer us a loaner, so anyway, we've got a truck potentially on the way, hopefully on the way. I don't wanna, I don't wanna jinx it, but um, I went to go grab the last stuff out. We've been here for what, hour, two hours? And he had the nerve to ask me when I'm gonna get this trailer out of here. Like, I don't know. It would be a lot easier to move the trailer if I, my truck hadn't just quit working with 50,000, 49,000 miles on it. It'd be a lot easier to move my trailer if that were the case. And after all that, a Cummins comes to save the day. Ford Cummins. So we had spent the last couple of hours just searching every single possible option to rent some sort of truck to get the trailer home or at least get most of our stuff home. And there were not many good options. We had no transportation, no nothing. And out of nowhere, this incredibly kind gentleman named Chris reaches out to me and says, hey man, I've got a truck. It's a good diesel truck. It's sorted. It's got a gooseneck. It'll get you home. I can come pick you up off the side of the road. I don't live too far from you and you can use my truck to get your trailer home. And I normally am not one to want to use other people's stuff. I try to avoid it at all costs, but man, this was an offer I couldn't turn down because at this point, all I wanted to do was to get my trailer home. You know, that, that feeling of helplessness, being stranded on the side of the road, no transportation, no way to go anywhere, do anything, and, and knowing how vulnerable my stuff is. You see trucks with trailers get stolen all the time out of much better, much safer places. So there was no way I was leaving this trailer. If I had to sleep in it, to make sure nothing happened to it, that's what I was gonna have to do, but he came in and saved the day. All right, diesel stop number two. We are about four hours from home at a pilot. It is technically like midnight, 1230. I think we're still in the other time zone. We're about to cross over. We lose an hour going back home, so it makes it later. ETA is like four, probably five in the morning. Long day for sure, but I'll be happy if we just make it home. Definitely a rig though, this combo. It's a nice looking combo. The only difficulty, uh, you know, this truck is sick. So this, this is a new thing for me. Never driven a stick shift truck with a trailer, but it's kind of cool. It's got an engine brake, but it's a short bed. So short beds and goosenecks, you can't turn all the way or you'll crush the cab corners. So that's my biggest fear, <laughs> avoiding these. So we got to come to truck stops because I can't make any tight turns like I normally would with the gooseneck. Um, but yeah, anyway, we're getting back on the road. All right, well, we drove through the night, but we managed to make it home. We got in at about 5.30 in the morning. What a long, long day, both physically and mentally, but we made it home. This thing is an absolute rig. So, you know, between the stick shift, the upgraded turbo, the exhaust brake, this thing towed beautifully. Temps were perfect, everything was perfect. This thing was phenomenal. Cruised amazingly on the highway, got us home without even a hiccup. Uh, really, the only difficulty was the whole short bed situation. If we got ourselves in a tricky situation, we might not be able to back out of it. We had to make sure there was enough room to swing real wide in the gas station and play it safe and not risk running into the cab corners. Um, but we made it home in one piece. So uh, I've got to say just a huge, huge, I can't say huge enough thank you to Chris for letting us borrow this truck. You know, I was effectively a stranger to him. He, he knows me from the internet and that's it. But he was like, man, I was in a pickle once. This random guy that I didn't know stepped up and helped me out, saved the day. You know, I was he was stranded on the side of the road, same situation. And uh, he was like, I just want to pay it forward. You know, I just want to return the favor. And uh, what a great guy, super cool guy, really nice, really knowledgeable. Uh, just, I don't think he even really understood how much he was helping us and how much he was saving the day. Yeah, I'm eternally grateful. And just for the whole community, you know, if there's a silver lining in all of this, it's that we see a lot of hate on the internet. You know, it's kind of what's forced down our throats. Everyone hates each other. Everyone's arguing all the time. Um, but this is a reminder of just how great people are as a whole. You know, the amount of people that reached out 
and offered help. Uh, people I didn't know, people I did know, you know, my friend Harrison was kind of organizing on Facebook pages trying to find some help. He found someone that was going to be able to tow the trailer to their shop nearby. My friend Steven offered to drive up from Orlando to pick the trailer up and bring it back. My friend Zach offered to let me use his truck, which is about three hours away. And my other friend Noah, both of them from Clutch Kickers, was going to drive the truck to me so I could use that truck. You know, there was no shortage of people willing to help out. And, uh, you know, for being in that situation, a very helpless feeling, a very not fun situation, a situation I have dreaded uh, since I've been towing. I've always been, I've always dreaded the day that we break down with the trailer because it's an ordeal. And uh, for being in that situation, having all of that, that help definitely, uh, you realize you're not alone. Me, Raldo, and Josue. So that was great. Silver lining of this whole thing. So uh, yeah, we made it back home. Uh, truck is still at the dealer. I have no idea what's gonna happen with that. I really, I don't have, high hopes. You know, just getting the tow was an ordeal. Oh, well, is the trailer on your policy? And like, I was told that the towing counted, you know, with the trailer. I don't know if it's on my policy, <laughs> you know? And then basically we get there. The tow truck driver was gonna tow the truck with the trailer all in one shot. But then the, there was DOT swarming the rest area. They were checking everybody's stuff. So he didn't want to risk doing that because he didn't know if it was legal or not or whatever. So he called another guy to bring a, a truck with a gooseneck and tow the trailer separately. I ride with the tow truck driver with the truck. We get to the dealership. We go inside. He asks the guy behind the counter, oh, you know, where do you want me to put this truck? It's warranty, whatever. And then the guy's just kind of like, oh, you know, let's, let's put it back there. And then he's like, okay, well, where do you want us to put the trailer? The trailer? We don't take trailers here. We're not going to store a trailer here. And I was like, excuse me? I'm like, what am I, what do you expect me to do with my trailer? My truck broke down. I said, I don't know. I'm like, dude, I'm, I'm nine hours from home. I'm stranded here. I, I don't have anywhere to take my trailer. He's like, okay. Like, not my problem. Uh, I was just, I, I, that was something I was not prepared for. Yeah, I was prepared to fight the warranty claim, whatever, pay extra for the towing. I was not prepared for them to say that you can't even unhook the trailer here until you figure out things. So I'm like, dude, you sell trucks that are meant to tow trailers. They're marketed and designed to tow trailers. And you're telling me that the trailer can't get unhooked in your lot? You know, like, what am I expected to do? My entire livelihood is in that trailer. There's a car that I put a ton of time and money into building the trailer itself, all the spare parts, and more than that, the, the car is almost irreplaceable. You know, we spent six, eight months of our lives building that car. We've only done two comps with it so far. We're just getting into using it. If we were to lose that, you know, it, it would be horrible. It would be horrible. You know, we can't just go buy another one, even if money wasn't the object, which it also is, you know? So uh, anyway, uh, the tow truck driver is then like, oh, well, you know, we can take it to our lot. I'm like, well, where is that? And he's like, oh, you know, about 25 miles away. And I'm like, man, this is not, this does not sit well with me. Letting all of my possessions, we've got everything in this trailer, go to some random lot. We don't even know what's happening. So I asked the guy if I was going to get a loaner. You know, you won't let me keep the trailer here. And are you at least going to let me, give me a loaner to, to, to move it somewhere? And he was like, well, not until we diagnose it. So I'm like, oh man. And, and then the tow truck driver's pressuring me like, got to make a decision, big man. Big decisions. Got to make a decision, big man. Gotta, we got to get going. We can't sit around here all day. You know, it's been like two minutes. And I'm trying to come up with a solution here, you know, because again, not only is all that stuff in the trailer, but if we let them take the trailer, we have nothing. We are just stuck as individuals with our stuff. We either leave all our luggage, our bags, our safety equipment, camera gear, all that stuff in the trailer, or we're stranded in the middle of nowhere at this dealership with multiple bags. And you know, just none of it was, none of it seemed like a great solution for me. So I saw that out in front of the dealership. There was like a little gravel pull off. I'm like, can, can I at least put it there till I figure something out? Like, I'm just, I can't figure it out right now. I'm trying to figure it out. Like, I'm gonna do something. I'm not leaving this trailer. And uh, he was like, I guess, you know? So we put the trailer there. We got to work on trying to figure out a solution. We started calling all the rental agencies and really our only hope of getting the whole trailer home was Enterprise. They sometimes have trucks with goosenecks that they rent. So that was that was kind of our, our only shot to be able to get this whole thing home in one piece. And unfortunately, uh, A, they wouldn't offer one way. It had to be a round trip, had to return the truck there, which, and there was no listing of uh, the, the, the fee if you don't return it. Uh, which I was going to eat that whatever it was just to get us home get us out of this pickle get my trailer off the side of the road But it didn't matter because they didn't have any trucks with goosenecks uh, with gooseneck hitches We even grabbed my puck system out of my truck in case it had a prep kit, but they didn't have anything So our next option was basically to get a u-haul box truck take as much stuff out of the trailer as we can put it in the box truck Get a u-haul open trailer put the car on the trailer and bring at least most of the stuff home now the obvious problem with that is the trailer is still 
not only stranded in that area, but it's in a place where it's not supposed to be. It's on the side of the road. So we'd have to A, get the trailer moved, figure out a way to move the trailer, but B, figure out a place to move it to um, in a, a place that's safe and we don't have to worry about it getting stolen. So that was just not an ideal option. And then that is when Chris came to save the day. He sent me a message. He offered to even let us take this thing to LS Fest, do LS Fest, and then come back. But I didn't want to risk putting us in an even worse situation. You know, if we had issues with this truck, uh, I just wanted to get the stuff home and be done with it. I have my trailer and my car here safe and sound. It, it had already been such a long day. You know, we were smack dab in the middle of our trip. We were nine hours from home. We were nine hours from our destination. Started driving at eight. We broke down at 11. We got towed around 2, probably got to the dealership around 2, 2.30, and it was around 4.30 before the dust had settled and Chris had arrived. So I'd gone in, done the paperwork to start this warranty process, and, you know, the guy made it a point to write down the cost of the diagnostics if it's not covered under warranty. If the diagnostic determines that it's not covered under warranty, there's also a cost <laughs> to that, which... To me, it's not a good sign. That tells me they're gonna to try to find any excuse they possibly can to not cover it under warranty, even though the truck is bone stock. I bought it 10,000 miles ago from a Ford dealer. I have not touched it. I even took it to the dealership for oil changes. But that aside, I ask them, okay, how long is it gonna to take uh, to do the diagnostics? You know, like we've gotta figure out a plan. Uh, at least two to three days, maybe more. I'm like, okay, so. Yeah, we definitely got to get this thing out of here. You know, and that, that frustrated me a little bit. I'm not expecting special treatment because of the situation we're in, but I feel like if I was a service rider and you've got this guy who's stranded, I'd at least try to find someone, pull a tech off something and be like, hey, can you get this diagnosed so we can let this guy know, you know, what to expect where he's at. You know, if this might be a simple fix, maybe I'll get a hotel, stay in the area, find a place for the trailer, yada, 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 wait for my truck to be done and bring it home. But if it's not going to be a simple fix, then obviously I got to find a way to get home. So just that really surprised me. I wasn't expecting that. Um, you know, I wasn't expecting they were going to be able to fix it same day, but I, I thought they'd at least look at it and give me an idea of what to expect. So after all that, we had Chris on the way. Once we knew we had a truck on the way, we were going to get home. I went back in to grab the last bit of stuff out of my truck because again, it was such a rush, you know, with the tow truck driver, I gotta go, gotta go. So I go ask the same service rider that I had been dealing with, you know, hey man, I need to get the last few things out of my truck. I forgot a couple things. And he's like, oh, uh, by the way, when are, you, when, are you, when are they coming to pick up that trailer? When are you getting that trailer out of here? And I was like, Ex excuse me? Like, dude, my truck is broken. I am stranded nine hours from home. I don't want to be here any more than you want me to be here. I don't want my trailer to be sitting out there. I don't want to be sitting on the side of the road with my trailer in the sun with no water, no drinks, no nothing, like no transportation. Like this is the last thing I want. And you're, you're harassing me about you need to get it out of here sooner than later. Oh, my service manager is asking me about it. Like, come on, man. Like, come on, cut me, cut me some slack here. You know, I understand you don't have any sympathy for the situation that I'm in. You don't seem to care at all where, you know, what predicament we found ourselves in. But at least cut me some slack, dude. I'm trying to figure this out. I don't want to be here anymore than you want me to be here. You know, obviously I'm sure it probably hurts sales <laughs> that there's a trailer stranded outside of your, uh, of your lot, which means obviously one of your trucks broke down and uh, that's why it's stranded there, but there's not much I can do about it with a broken truck and the fact that you won't give me a loaner until you diagnose it, but you won't diagnose it for two to three days. So that was that, that was where we're at. But moral of the story is we made it home. Thanks to the kindness uh, of other people, the kindness of Chris, we got a truck, we got the trailer home, we're here, everything is back, safe and sound. The truck, who knows, you know, whatever happens will happen, at least that stuff is here and is home. So we need to get it all unloaded. Um, but I gotta flip the trailer around. There's a slight problem with that. Let me show you. I've gotta make a pretty tight turn to get the trailer backed in here. You gotta crank it pretty hard. And it may be possible with the short bed to do it without getting into the cab corner, um, but it's risky and it's gonna be close and there's no reason to risk it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get this thing unhooked and break out the trusty dusty bum and fear. Man, am I glad I didn't sell this thing. Uh, it's gonna come in real handy right now. So I've got the batteries out of it. I just leave them inside and keep them topped off. So we'll get those sauce back in, get this thing fired up, get that thing fired up, do a lot of truck switching and swapping. And then I'll explain to you what my truck plans are from here because this definitely changed my entire perception of what the best option is. So let's get this stuff moved around first and then we'll get into that.
see if she starts. I missed that chop. Thing's been sitting for several months. Anyway, let's get this trailer looked up, moved around, and I'll explain what uh, what my current plans are. good rig.
man, this thing is a little bit too big to fit in here, but it's in. Uh, we wanted to take a look at it, check everything over. Like I said, it has been sitting for a while. It has gotten absolutely no love, but it fired right up like it has every time. The only thing that dies is the batteries, but as long as it's got battery, fires right up every time, sitting for months. So what a trooper. Uh, but yeah, car's back, unloaded, in the shop. Definitely bittersweet. You know, I'm super grateful to have it back home, but it is tough to unload all your stuff out of the trailer. Back at home after what was supposed to be a race weekend, but you're basically just back where you started after two days of driving and a whole ordeal. Definitely, uh, definitely bummed we missed it. I was very excited for LS Fest. Again, we were prepared, but hey, it is what it is. We're here. That's what matters. So why do we have the Fummins in here? Well, obviously I had to move it around, but my current thinking is we put the Fummins back in service. Sell the truck back to the dealership, whatever. I don't, I don't know, I've never sold a newer truck like that. Sell the truck, the current truck. You know, I don't owe a ton on it, so I should put money back in my pocket, get rid of the payment, and then just put this thing back in service and fix it up. You know, it needs some love, some cosmetic things. It needs some work, and that's why we ended up buying the new truck. We were headed into race season. We had been so busy building this car that we hadn't taken any time and put it into doing the upgrades and the repairs and the preventative maintenance we needed to do on this truck. And the whole idea with the new truck was, you know, the obvious things, it's more comfortable, it's, you know, better performance, tows effortlessly. I mean, my grandma could get in that thing and tow my trailer down the highway. I mean, anyone could drive that truck. Uh, but more than that, it was just minimal effort required. You know, we've got, before an event, we've got to prep this car nut and bolt check it, mount tires, do all that stuff. We've got to prep the trailer. So when you have to, you add in kind of having to prep the truck and go through everything on the truck as well, it just makes it a lot. So the idea was get a newer truck, you know, take it to the dealership for oil changes and know it's gonna take you wherever you wanna go without breaking down and just not having to worry about it. That peace of mind was the single biggest reason why I bought that truck. So for it to break down, you know, whether it breaks down ever again or not is kind of irrelevant. It's gonna be in the back of my mind. Well, of course this, I mean, I knew it could break down, but I didn't expect it to. Now I'm gonna expect it to. Thing two is the idea was, well, it shouldn't break down, but if it does break down, at least the warranty will take care of me. At least they'll take care of me. They'll fix it. Give me a loaner truck, I can keep going, I can get my trip done. You know, they said they would put you in a hotel if, if need be, if it was gonna take time to fix your truck and, and all this thing. They promised you the world. And it turns out they're not willing to do anything. You know, we would have been in a better situation if we had this truck because we wouldn't be afraid to touch it in fear of voiding the warranty. We know how to work on it. I built this whole dang truck. I've touched everything on this truck. I know how everything works. We could swap an injector on this thing in a parking lot in an hour and be back on the road or do whatever we needed to do. Or worst case, you know, find someone that can fix it right away and pay them to fix it right away. But with the other truck, we're just, we're beholden to the dealership. They tell you, oh, we'll get to it when we get to it. And, and that's it. That's that's your option. There's nothing you can do about it. I mean, we haven't even got to the part of whether they'll cover it under warranty, how long it's gonna take to get the parts, how long it's gonna take to fix it. And just, again, this whole situation was eye-opening for me. I was blissfully ignorant on how this all would go if we ever came here. And I was wrong, you know, it was the wrong choice. I'll say that right now. I can admit that it was the wrong choice, you know? It's just up to them. If they're in a good mood and they wanna help me out, they will. If not, they tell me to figure it out, you know? I mean. Let alone the fact that we lost out on six, seven hundred dollars worth of hotels, entry fee to the event, all the prep work, all the planning, the sponsors that thought I was going to be there. You know, take all that aside, they weren't even willing to help us just get back home. You know, so it's just, just, yeah, I just didn't like it. It was a, just a disappointing experience. I mean, what, what would you say, Josue? What's your opinion on the whole ordeal? It was, was eye-opening, like you said. Yeah. I, I haven't experienced like new car stuff, warranty stuff. But yeah, me either. It's kind of, um, it's one of those things. Disappointing. Disappointing for sure. Yeah. For, for that. But we're back, we're home, so we'll pick it up from here. Right, <laughs> right. So we need to come up with a list of what to do to this thing, but we need to check it out thoroughly before we can do that. But that's my current thought. I built this truck for a reason, you know? The the nice thing about this truck is it's very easy to work on. It's still pretty modern and pretty comfortable. Going to the new truck, the reason I didn't originally buy a six, seven trucks, cause they're, they're not easy to work on. If something breaks, it's gonna be very difficult. And that's why I didn't wanna buy like 150, 200,000 mile one where stuff's gonna start breaking because I'm not going to want to work on it myself. But I thought I could kind of skate around that by buying one new enough with low enough miles where in theory I shouldn't have to work on it. And uh, you see how well that went. <laughs> Obviously I was wrong. So that's the thought. Oh, so he said you guys should comment below and tell us what you think we should do. <laughs> Vote on it. Should we sell the other truck once it's fixed and 
bring this truck back to better than its prime, you know, do a bunch of upgrades, get it back better than ever, or should we keep the other truck and continue on the path to sell this truck, which is what we were planning. Luckily, we haven't yet. Let me know what you think. Also, I don't want it to sound like, you know, I'm quitting just because of one bad incident. Uh, th this is something I would thought about prior to this, and the reason is when I bought the truck, I didn't have one normal, simple, non-swap stock vehicle, right? The, the Fummins was swapped, everything was swapped with the exception of my 1992 Pulsar, which is a 90s JDM car that you can't get parts for. So I didn't have one, you know, practical, normal vehicle. And I thought, probably not a bad idea to, to get something that's just stock, push the button, go, warranty, whatever. But that was before I got the F80. The F80 wasn't even on my radar at the time. But once I got that, that really kind of took over as the daily. So this dual purpose of I'll have a nice daily and a nice tow rig really becomes just a nice tow rig. I mean, that's all I really use the truck for because if I'm driving somewhere, I prefer to take the F80. So now it loses a lot of its justification because you know, I have all this money tied up in this payment and everything on this vehicle that only really gets used to tow and do truck things. Maybe I should get rid of it and go back to using the Fummins. And that was kind of the idea. And then this was kind of the straw that broke the camel's back. So that being said, I know this is a whole lot of talking, a whole lot of jibber jabber. That's just kind of the way it is. I wanted to give you the lay of the land, give you the whole story, explain it uh, in detail, not leave anything out. No, here we are. That's part of it. Sometimes you got to talk a lot. So that being said, though, uh, that's pretty much a wrap. I'll let you guys know what I hear from the dealership. I don't expect to hear from them for a few days. I'm keeping my fingers crossed that this doesn't have to turn into a battle to get this thing covered under warranty. It's bone stock. I only get diesel at reputable, nice truck stops. You know, I don't get them in random podunk middle of nowhere to save some money. I spend the extra money. You know, I, I've done everything I can to prevent this truck from getting hurt. I baby it. Uh, I've left it bone stock, you know? So hopefully it's not a fight. We'll see. Uh, the verdict's not out on that yet, but for now, I'm going to wrap this up. So thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I sure hope to see you next time. Goodbye.